Welcome to Catholic News World. Welcome to Catholic News World. Please subscribe to our channel. My name is Steph. Here are this week's breaking news headlines. An explosion at a Catholic University student's Holy Mass leaves four dead and many injured. Four people were killed and 50 wounded when an explosion went off in a university gymnasium during a Catholic Sunday Advent Holy Mass in the southern Philippines. Police Lt. Gen. Emmanuel Peralta explained that the blast that was caused by an improvised explosive device. The blast took place at Mindanao State University in Marawi, on Sunday, December 2, 2023. Earlier on Sunday, Philippine President Ferdinand Marcos Jr. condemned the senseless and most heinous acts perpetrated by foreign terrorists. Police and the military strengthened security in the country's south and around the capital Manila. Pope Francis prayed for the victims at his Angelus address. Bishops of Europe call for a definitive ceasefire between Israel and Palestine, saying, let us continue to pray for the miracle of peace. The Council of Episcopal Conferences of Europe met in La Valletta, Malta, for its annual plenary assembly. The European bishops also looked with concern at the current situations of war, the one in Ukraine, now in its second year, the scenes in Nagorno-Karabakh and the conflict in the Holy Land, reiterating their no to war and renewing their call for a definitive ceasefire, for the release of hostages and for humanitarian corridors to be kept open in Gaza. The bishops of Europe expressed their closeness to all those suffering from war in various parts of the world, especially in the Holy Land, Ukraine, and Armenia. In the declaration released by the Joint Committee of the Council of Bishops of Europe and the Conference of European Churches on November 7, the signatories condemn the violence in the Middle East and call on the political leaders of all parties to exercise their responsibility to ensure a ceasefire on all fronts. We demand that all civilian lives are protected and that humanitarian corridors are opened. The declaration also noted, the grave situation in which the people of Gaza live, restricted in their fundamental rights and forced to suffer injustices, has been going on for too long. We demand the entire international community to mobilize and uphold the international law, in particular the UN resolutions, with the aim of opening serious negotiations to create a lasting peace, in truth and justice, the statement says. In his keynote opening speech, CCE President, Archbishop Gentaras Grusas of Vilnius, reaffirmed the European bishops' closeness to all those suffering from war across the world and their plea for peace. Today, more than ever, the world needs peace, he said, recalling Pope Francis' words that war is always a defeat for humanity. We continue to pray for the victims and their families. Let us continue to pray for the miracle of peace. Regarding the war in the Holy Land, Archbishop Grusas once again condemned the terrorist rampage conducted by Hamas on October 7, and also decried the Israeli military escalation triggered by the attack because, he said, violence cannot be a way to defend a cause. The president also renewed the appeal for a definitive ceasefire in the Gaza Strip so that the release of hostages may continue and the humanitarian corridors in Gaza may remain open. An Opus Dei Catholic priest died suddenly while preaching in Montreal, Canada at the age of 51. Father Fadi Seraf died suddenly on November 28, 2023. Opus Dei Canada wrote, Please pray for the repose of the soul of Father Fadi Seraf, 51, who passed away today suddenly of an apparent heart attack while preaching a retreat at the Menor de Boju. May he rest in peace. Archbishop George Ganswine ordained Father Seraph as a priest on May 22, 2021. Fadi Seraph was born in Damascus, Syria. He came to Canada at 17 to study engineering at McGill University. He asked to join Opus Dei in 1990. He received a master's in theology from the University of Navarre in Spain. Father Sarah moved to Rome in 2020 to start a doctorate in spiritual theology. He said, as a priest you become a priest 100%, so you leave behind your other activities. The death toll in Gaza tops 17,000 as Christian churches call for a ceasefire, as the only way forward to prevent mass killing, further death, and destruction. Gaza's death toll from Israeli attacks mounts to over 17,400, according to news sources, including over 7,000 children. The Israeli death toll in the Hamas attack stood at 1,200, according to official figures. 
A coalition of Christian churches, including Catholic, Orthodox, Protestant, and Evangelical, call for an immediate ceasefire in Gaza, addressing the Biden administration. They wrote, with the temporary pause in violence having ended, Churches for Middle East Peace condemns the escalating violence in Jerusalem, the West Bank, and Gaza that is having devastating effects on civilians. The Biden administration's reluctance to support a comprehensive ceasefire and its consistent practice of publicly articulating empty rhetoric about the protection of civilians is abhorrent as Israel continues its destructive bombardment on the Gaza Strip, and more than 170 have died in the first 24 hours. In the past days, CMEP welcomed the release of hostages, Israelis and those of other nationalities, and the parallel release of Palestinian prisoners along with the cessation of violence, which allowed desperately needed humanitarian aid to flow into Gaza during a seven-day pause in the fighting. Yet, CMEP also recognized the incomplete and insufficient nature of these measures. Hostages and prisoners are still held, and much more humanitarian relief is required. Only an end to all violence and diplomatic solutions in the context of a comprehensive ceasefire to address core issues will bring about the safety, security, and protection of all Israelis and Palestinians. As hostilities escalate again, CMEP condemns all violence against civilians. In just the past few days, Israeli soldiers killed two Palestinian children during a raid into a Jenin refugee camp in the West Bank. The raid was reportedly the largest since the beginning of the war, with what residents described as including hundreds of Israeli soldiers, and lasted most of the day. As the soldiers withdrew from the camp, they shot and killed an 8-year-old boy and a 15-year-old boy. Palestinian gunmen killed three Israelis and injured 16 others after opening fire at a bus stop in Jerusalem. The gunmen were shot and killed by off-duty soldiers in the area. Hamas has claimed responsibility for the mass shooting. CMEP condemns the killing of Israeli civilians. After the temporary ceasefire broke down on December 1, Israel's bombardment resumed and has already killed more than 100 people in less than 24 hours. This devastating bombardment comes after Israeli assurances to the United States that it would change how it executed its military campaign in order to better protect civilians. CMEP condemns the Israeli government's bombing which indiscriminately affects civilians in Gaza and has already caused countless deaths, thousands of whom are children. Adding to our outrage as Christians who deeply value our scriptures, reports published by several sources indicate Israel has accelerated its targeting of civilian infrastructure with civilians inside using an artificial intelligence program their military calls the gospel. This is anything but good news for civilians in Gaza. Churches for Middle East Peace calls on the Biden administration and Congress to shift course and publicly support a comprehensive, bilateral ceasefire that will bring an end to the devastating violence. The continued violence and destruction does nothing to make Israelis or Palestinians safer. The United States government cannot continue to say they oppose the killing of innocent Palestinian civilians while being unwilling to use diplomatic leverage to bring a durable ceasefire to fruition. Further, the pre-October 7 status quo remains unacceptable. The United States must also use its leverage to address the deeper issues at stake so that a comprehensive and lasting peace with justice can be realized. The forced displacement and killing of thousands of Palestinians in Gaza over the past several weeks and now continuing into December must stop. The United States government must do everything in its power to bring the ethnic cleansing of Gaza to an end. After the Angelus on the first Advent Sunday, December 3, 2023, Pope Francis said, Dear brothers and sisters, In Israel and Palestine the situation is serious. It pains us that the truce has been broken, this means death, destruction, misery. Many hostages have been freed, but many are still in Gaza. Let us think about them, their families who had seen a light, a hope to embrace their loved ones again. In Gaza there is much suffering, there is a lack of basic necessities. I hope that all those who are involved may reach a new ceasefire agreement as soon as possible and find solutions other than weapons, trying to take courageous paths to peace. Later, on December 8, the Solemnity of the Immaculate Conception, Pope Francis went to Rome's central Piazza di Spagna for the traditional act of veneration to the Blessed Virgin Mary. There he prayed for the gift of peace in the world, especially in Ukraine, Palestine, and Israel. 
Pope Francis placed a wreath of roses at the foot of the 39-foot-high column bearing a statue of the Virgin Mary, he said a prayer invoking the gift of peace in the world. The Pope began the prayer by thanking the Virgin for her discreet and constant presence, which gives us comfort and hope. Your person, he said, the very fact that you exist reminds us that evil has neither the first nor the last word, that our destiny is not death but life, it is not hatred but brotherhood, it is not conflict but harmony, it is not war but peace. He entrusted to Mary the peoples of Ukraine, Palestine and Israel he then entrusted to her mercy all peoples oppressed by injustice and poverty and suffering war, referring in particular to the tormented Ukrainian people and the Palestinian and Israeli peoples who have plunged back into a spiral of violence. The Pope also turned his thoughts to the many mothers who, as Mary did, are grieving for the loss of their children killed by war and terrorism or who see them leave for desperate journeys of hope. Finally, Pope Francis entrusted to Mary's protection all the women victims of violence, dry, please, their tears and those of their loved ones, he prayed. Concluding, Pope Francis implored the Blessed Virgin to show the, the way of conversion, because, he said there is no peace without forgiveness and there is no forgiveness without repentance. The world changes if hearts change, and everyone must say, starting with mine. But only God can change the human heart with his grace, the one in which you, Mary, you are immersed from the first moment. The grace of Jesus Christ, our Lord, that you generated in the flesh, who died and rose again for us, and who you always point out to us. He is salvation, for every man and for the world. Come, Lord Jesus. May your kingdom of love, justice and peace come. Amen. Watch our program every Friday at 7.30pm. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe to Catholic News World Channel. God bless. Please subscribe to Catholic News World's YouTube channel. Thanks and God bless.